Apple Yeti, and welcome to the fourth part in the beginner's mini build of Applegate. In this video, we're going to be finishing out our industrial supply chain with future proofing in mind. You see, we're going to want to think about all the effects traffic this particular type of traffic is going to have on our city and how we can counteract that. In order to do that, we're going to need to think about a where our commercial zones are and where they're going to be. And two, we're going to need to think about how we export our goods. Now, at the end, when we do finally zone it all in, after we've taken care of all that, one of my personal goals is self-sufficiency, where I want to keep the imports of this city under 100 units. So as we go through and we zone everything in, I will go ahead and talk a little bit about some of the things you want to be wary of when we finish this out. Now, I don't think all of this is going to happen all at once, because if we jump into game right now, let's see right there. If you look down at the RCI meter down over there, you'll see that we have a lot of residential demand and very little industry. So there's going to be some things we need to think about first. And then I have a strange feeling that as we progress and build out the industry area, we're going to need to build more residential before we could finish it out. So. Those are some of the things we're going to have to do. It's going to have to be broken up a little bit. I hope you're okay with that. And there's actually another thing that we're going to do right off the start that actually has nothing to do with any of it. And it's actually we're going to be implementing an a in. We're going to be implementing a university, specifically the trade school. Now, this one's actually preparation for the next episode where we're going to be doing public transportation and tourism. But we'll talk about that in that episode. Just know that we'll just be very briefly mentioning a couple things and then bypassing it. So anyways, all right, as for the university, I just have a couple notes here and then I might mention one thing here or there throughout the rest of the episode, but this is to prep for the next one. Now we're not going to set aside a specific campus area anywhere in this city. We're going to treat everywhere that's not an industry area or a future park area as a university area. And we're just going to place its buildings and its parks all throughout our city, wherever we have space. So the idea I have behind this, like if we come down here and we could see we have some empty space in this little school area. The idea I have behind this is maybe it's a separate trade school teaching people how to bake or whatever. I think you get the picture. All the different buildings are different trade schools just all throughout the city teaching people different things. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the neighborhood all right so for the tourism area or not tourism oh my goodness for the residential area i'm sorry i'm thinking ahead here thinking thinking about the next episode already we're actually going to want to buy this next tile over here that goes a little bit further down the bay now you might be looking at that and saying how are you going to fit what we need in this tiny little space well i'll briefly time lapse that and i'll cover a couple points i have here written in my notes but yeah, you don't really need to see me do all this stuff or talk about it. You know how it's done. Follow the principles of road hierarchy and everything should be all right. All right, just a quick couple talking points here. From the left side of the beach all the way to the right side, I'm going to be increasing the height as we go up. On the left, I'm going to be using low density commercial. And in the center, I'm going to be using leisure commercial. And then the far right is when I'll swap over to the generic high density. For the residential, I'm just going to keep it all high density and I'm going to make just make it all um, historical at level one. I know some of you out there are probably saying you can use the high rise ban. Now, there's one negative downside to that, and that's it actually it prevents them from ever reaching the highest level, at least in the testing I've done. I was never able to reach a max level building while using the high rise ban. But if you make them historical, they can still continue to level up. It's just that the building itself will not change. So anyways, that's all. All right, here we are. We've reached a new milestone, 13,000 population. We've unlocked a new tile. Now I know we just spent one, so I believe we have two in the bag now. Let's take a look at what we've got. 
Oh, thank goodness. We got crematoriums. You have no idea how thankful and happy I am. Finally, I swear in City Skylines 2, they better just give you a dang crematorium with your cemeteries. They give you the recycling center with the landfills. Why can we not have both options available? But if you can't tell, I'm excited. So let's take a look to see if we actually got anything mandatory, which actually that is mandatory. So make sure you place those down so that way you can start emptying out those cemeteries that are backing up. I think I'm up to like eight cemeteries now. It's absolutely ridiculous. All right, here we are. Grand City, 16,000. That happened a lot sooner, or a lot closer to the last one than I thought it would. And I think I actually forgot to say, you know, remember your services and whatnot and to check, make sure you'll cover to the next one. But it looked like it didn't matter. It looked like we hit it anyways. I completely forgot. But let's go ahead and see if we got any new buildings, any mandatory services or anything like that. Any, anything noteworthy? Absolutely not. We didn't even get new tile to purchase. Next one is going to be 24,000. So that's a 50% increase in population. We're going to have to think about our services and adjust accordingly for that. And I'm not going to bother looking at what we unlock. I did see the new tile. New tile. So I've got this all built in, filled in, zoned in. As you can tell, we've hit two milestones. Now is when we got to start moving back into the industry. So I misspoke a couple times and I rambled on for a little bit too long. And while I did that, I happened to buy the next two tiles. We're going to go with this one right over here that has the highway, the rail and the little pond here. And then we're also bought the one or I bought the one that has access to the peninsula over here where we're going to have all the tourism. And really, there's a lot on our plate right now. And I'm not going to ramble on right now. I'm just going to state what we're going to do. And then I'm going to get into the time lapse of it. It's going to take a long time because it is a lot of infrastructure I'm about to build. We basically need to build a new highway and a highway to highway interchange. We're going to need to build two interchanges from the highway to like arterials or collectors or whatever. And then we're going to need to build two train lines, one for cargo and one for passengers. The passenger one is thinking ahead because if we're going to be building so much infrastructure, we need to make sure that we have adequate space for it. And I don't think there's a better way to do that than to just do it right off the bat and have that be done first. So we got a lot to think about. We got a lot to build and I'll kind of talk about it while I'm time lapsing it. All right, so I don't know how you think or plan things, but one of the ways that I like to do it is from the outside in to think of the end goal first and then work backwards or at least plan backwards and then work forwards. And that's exactly what we're doing in this industry area. We're going to be building the part of the interchange that we can build as well as the cargo line and then the frontage road. And then once we have everything else in, we can go ahead and fill it in with roads and it should work just fine. Now, as far as the cargo line, the reason or the importance for that is to actually go from our mining sector and our forestry sector down to here to the generic industry where their specialized goods will be processed. And then eventually down to the cargo train hub thing. I don't know what its actual in-game name is, but it's the one that has the the rail access with the ship access. The frontage road is just intended to be like an optional pathway for our industry area. Now I can actually foresee some potential issues with that. You see when, because we're using the highway for the frontage road, it's speed limit is going to be so high that it might be seen as a more viable option or faster route than either the arterial or the highway itself. And we're going to eventually want to, we're eventually going to want to think about that. We're eventually going to want to take a look and see how many people are using it. And do we need to reduce its speed limit? If we do, we can downgrade it to a just regular two unit wide road. The downside of that is it'll essentially turn it into just a, an aesthetic piece serving absolutely no purpose whatsoever besides just to be there. Now, we also want to be thinking 
about the future as well. Like where our car or where our commercial zone goods are going to be sent to, not just exported, but also to our own commercial zones. And that's where the next highway comes into play. Because we have that interchange there, if which will provide them quick and easy access to the highway, we're going to want to create another highway that goes down into our tourism zone. I'm personally thinking of having that go all the way to the other side. So that way it will help convince or help spread out the commercial zone good trucks from using the highway and from using the arterial. So that way they'll be split up between the two. At least that's my theory. I have no idea if that'll even be efficient or effective or whatever, but I'm going to try it out and it'll be what it'll be. Now, because we are bringing the highway down or bringing a highway down that way, we're going to need to create a highway to highway interchange that has access in both directions. Because you got to remember, this is also for a tourism district. There's going to be a lot of traffic coming this way, not just industrial, but a lot of people. Now, of course, every intersection is going to break down. So we do have to think about alternate methods of getting these tourists in there, which is the reason why I was I built the Gosh, the passenger rail line. I don't know why I keep forgetting certain words, but whatever. At least I get the concept. We're going to want to bring that passenger rail line down and through. I also decided to put down a arterial to highway interchange right where the highway crosses are basically our city's main arterial. That's that's also for the tourism as well, because if we're going to be ending that highway way down deep into the tourism district, they're going to want another point in order to get into the city or else they're all going to want to go to use that industrial interchange to get off and then drive into the tourism area. And that's a no go. So we had to do that or we have to do that in order to prevent some ridiculous traffic routes. All right, here we are. City services are in check, as you can see the solar updraft tower over there. I put that one near the highway, kind of as a resemblance to the one in Nevada that you can see from the highway going to Las Vegas, or from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. You can see it off the highway. I personally hate it because it's blinding, but you know what? It's there. And that's where I got that. And that's why I wanted to put it right there next to the highway. But anyways, we're not here for that. We are here for the industry area. Finally, I know, what are we like 15 minutes into the video and I've yet to even make this industry. So this area that I'm painting right here, this is where I want our generic industry to go. Just to the right over here is where I'm just gonna save room for a couple city services, maybe a quick slip lane to get onto this particular, gosh, what is this? freeway entrance, freeway on-ramp that will take them directly into the tourism commercial area. And then just to the left over here is where, I would, where I'm thinking of placing our warehousing as well as the cargo hub or cargo station. The reason why I have the highway onto the frontage road and then bringing it down into the right is so that way we can kind of break a little bit of road hierarchy here and have the interchange actually come directly into this particular industry area. I think that kind of adds, I think that'll help out. And I think because it's in the middle of the industry area, we won't see too many residents or tourists using it. At least that's my hope. I was thinking maybe we can just have its maybe interchange come off of like right here. If I can see anything, what's going on with my stuff? Maybe like right there. That appears to be at least central enough for me to be okay with where it would look like it still provides them quick access to that interchange and then maybe somewhere around over here let's just bring this out maybe to about right around here we can bring off another one and that can be the main road that connects the industry over off on this other side to the warehousing and cargo hub now, as you can tell with the style choice that I've gone with over here, where I'm kind of starting to push the roads close to the arterial, I kind of want to resemble that I'm starting to move into space, maximizing the space available, such as right here where they have their backs butted up right against it. Same thing. I just want to start to maximize that space. 
going a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Now over here in this area, I'm just going to straight up maximize all the space available. I'm just going to run this all the way down over here as far as it'll go. Just like that, both directions. And then from here, we can start to outline it and fill it all in. Something I didn't mention is that I'm going to go with the Industrial Evolution theme. It is a content creator pack. I personally like it. It starts off at level one with these red brick buildings. And they have this really cool, they have like that old in industrial evolution type vibe, exactly as the name says. And I'm actually going to also add another policy called filter industrial waste. Since this is quite literally right across the street from all this residential, we're going to want to minimize the pollution that would cause them to get sick. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and just get this all zoned in or whatever. I think I pretty much mentioned all my notes, so. All right, so here we are. I've got the industry area laid out, spread out, and ready to explain out. So hopefully future Yeti here isn't going to be lazy and he'll use some nice little fancy handy dandy graphics to help you see what I'm trying to explain here. Now, through the center, we have our like kind of like pseudo arterial there, and it's going to be it has no zoning on it. I want to keep that as conflict free as possible. And as you can tell right around the center where we have the access up to that frontage road, that also has no zoning either. And there's actually no connections on either of those roads for quite some time. I want to have people just be able to zoom right through to exactly where they need to go. It actually looks like people are already doing it, which is kind of cool. Now I have a total of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five connections in this. And I really want the connectivity here as much as possible. I want those smaller ones, like the one down at the bottom and the one way at the top on the left, in order to help spread out traffic just a little bit more. It'll help dilute it as well. So say for instance, at the bottom here, we're not gonna get a whole lot of truck traffic or vehicle traffic that wants to use that, but well, I mean, I hope. I'm really hoping if it turns out that it's bad, I'll go ahead and delete it. But I'm hoping that only a few want to actually use that. And so the one on the left, this one over here, this goes off to the cargo area over here. And if we come down in here, you can see I use the five lane asymmetrical roads. My intention with that was that way we can kind of adjust things and rotate which side has the three and the two and whatnot. So we can get dedicated turn lanes. So as we watch this junction and see where the majority of people are going, left, right, straight, whatever. We can adjust accordingly with who gets the dedicated turn lanes. Kind of a brief little mention here, I will see if we upgrade that. If we look at the one on the bottom, it now only has a dedicated left, two straight throughs. And if we upgrade it again, it now has a dedicated right and left and one straight through. And you can do that for all sorts of things, whatever, just to get whatever turn lanes you need. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So, I mean, that's the layout in a nutshell. Now, if we go up top to our handy dandy little fan dangled info views up there for the oh imports. Oh, commercial goods. Yeah, we zoned a bunch of commercial in. We're not producing commercial goods yet. We're importing them. But if we go to our exports here, that really threw me through a loop seeing that we were importing. But if we go to our exports here, you could see that as we start to put in industry, each one of those exports is going to start to shrink smaller and smaller and smaller. Once we start getting towards the end of all of our industry, generic industry, that's when we really want to start being careful. As we start to see, say for instance, that agriculture one up there starts to shrink just a little bit more. As soon as it gets to the point that I'm uncomfortable with, I'm just going to stop allowing those particular industry buildings from zoning in. I can't remember the names of those buildings off the top of my head, but I'll look it up and I'll leave a list of the names in the description. And I actually have expanded upon that list just a little bit, not a whole lot, to include some level two and some level three names as well. But yet again, those are just the leveled up versions of the level ones. So as long as you're paying attention when you first zone them in, you'll be able to catch exactly what they're going to import right off the bat. But anyways, it's all here. It's all ready to get zoned in. I'm going to zone it in and sit here and do all the boring stuff and demolishing buildings as they zone in just to make sure we don't get oil or whatever. So I will be right back. 
Also, I completely forgot to mention that industry, just like residential, you want to zone in a little slowly. Now, residential is for a different reason where residential, if they all move in at the same time, they're all going to pass away at about the same time. Industry, it works in waves depending on building size. Oh, it's, so it does vary a little bit, but so you don't have to worry about it as much. But they do all import at the same time. Buildings of the same size, if you zone them all in at the same time, will import at the same time and export at the same time. So you could either do this by varying building sizes as you zone them in or just zone in small sections like you see I have right now and then waiting a while and maybe detailing a bit around town, whatnot. After a few minutes, you go back, you zone more in and whatnot. I think you get the picture. Just be careful. Go a little slow with your industrial zoning just so we don't experience all these huge, heavy waves of traffic. Here we are post zoning. Things are looking great and optimal. I did have a point where I didn't have enough city service coverage for these industry areas, so a few of them abandoned. A few oil buildings had zoned in. As you can see in our import view here, at least recently we haven't had any imports, so I'm assuming I demolished all the ones that were importing oil. And if we go to our exports here, we're exporting now four tons of goods, roughly four tons of goods, depending on what part of the world you're from. Some places go with a thousand units or whatever it is. And anyways. But as you can see, we're now importing a lot less of our agricultural products, a lot less of our forestry products and mining products. Things are looking great. It looks like we can zone in a little bit more industry if we end up needing it. But we're actually experiencing a few problems now where occasionally our industry will not have enough buyers for goods. Now that's of course, one, we don't have enough commercial for them. And two, our current only exporting method next to these guys is our highways. The other train station is all the way on the other side of town. And it's just, it's very difficult for them to move their goods around. That's something that we're going to have to think of going forward, which we will, we're going to be taking care of that, or at least attempting to. We're going to make a darn good effort at it, and hopefully it's good enough. But for now, as you can see, we are experiencing a little bit of traffic issues here, where right here, you can see there, we have too many people trying to use this particular road that I said might be a problem. And then if we go down the road here, you can see we have an absolute ton of people trying to use this interchange to get out of town. I have a feeling that this one is actually two issue or will be solved by two things. One, the cargo station. And two, when we finish buying this tile and actually build out the interchange going in the direction that they want to go. But we can do what we can do over here. We can, the idea I had over here is to simply upgrade that to a one way road going out. So that way nobody tries to turn left going into this place and they only use it to get out. And the other problem we're having is if we look and in, go into our, that button up there called traffic routes, you click on that, then you go to the junctions tab and you can see we have a light here. We don't want to stop the traffic on the arterial. We want these people coming off of this one way road to stop and yield to everybody. Now in City Skylines 1, we don't have yield signs, so unfortunately we just have to deal with what we get. And another place that was causing traffic that doesn't appear to be causing traffic right now is this particular junction. I think I was going a little bit too fast with my zoning and the traffic does still come in waves. My bad, I, I tried to space it out and go real easy, but it still happens to come in big waves at a time. And it'll back up from this light around the roundabout and then down the arterial towards that other intersection. If we really want to, we could just remove this traffic light here and it, I hope, I hope it'll help out. If it does cause problems, we'll put the traffic light back because that, that, I think that's also something else that'll happen in the future as we finish this area out of where there's more opportunities, more paths for people to take. So they don't all try to take this one route. But yeah, I'm thinking things are looking pretty good. As you can see, I also built out this industry or not industry service area. I moved a bunch of our recycling centers over here and just to kind of help spread their coverage out, give them immediate access to the interchange. So that way they can get deep into the tourism area really quickly. Yeah, I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. If you look 
down there at our handy dandy fancy little RCI meter. You can see that we don't have any industry demand. Well, very little at least. So in order to finish our industry area, we're going to need to reach the next milestone of Capital City to be able to buy the last tile over there. And to do that, I'm thinking of building out a neighborhood from over there on the left, right where you see the Hickory District and the Autumn Polytechnical Institute logos, all the way over to this roundabout over here, all the way on the right, to that downward branch off of the roundabout. Then I'll fill this whole area in. I do want to be mindful because in the next episode, this particular little kind of like a natural wave break, natural little peninsula type thing. I want to turn that into a city park to attract nature tours. So I am going to have to be mindful of what zoning I put around here and how I zone it. Because we are going to need to think of all the tourism stuff that's going to need to go here. But I'm thinking it's looking pretty great. I'm really happy with where we're at. We are experiencing only minor problems that should be fixed by the end of this industry area. And it's looking great. Let's check our imports one more time, just in case. Check our exports. So if you are going to be continuing, or if, as I go forward adding more industry, I'm actually not going to allow agriculture and forestry anymore. Maybe a little bit more forestry, but I think agriculture is reaching its end. And I'm only going to be doing mining, a little bit of forestry. And probably, judging by how much fish we're exporting and how every single dock is exporting fish, Maybe a few fish factories might be a little nice. I don't know. They're pretty big, so they take up a lot of room. And we do want to think about our warehousing that we want to put over here. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this dang neighborhood built out, zoned in and whatnot. And I will see you either for the next milestone or whatever I'm done. Capital City, what do you know? Population of 24,000. I believe in the planning I did, I estimated that we would have a minimum of 24,000 here, and it looks like we're going to be exceeding that by probably a lot. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look to see what we've unlocked here. We've got a new tile. We've unlocked ships. Now let's go ahead and take to see the next one. So it's 34,000 for the next one. And that's a little under half, maybe about a 40% increase. So just keep that in mind when you're adapting your city services, adjusting your budgets and all that fancy stuff. Would you look at that? We have hit Colossal City 34,000. I haven't even finished zoning it in on uh, the new neighborhood. We did run out of residential, but I wanted to make sure that things were going okay. Now let's take a look at what we've unlocked here. It looks like we got an, another tile, which is great. So I think that means we have two. I think we have the one for the industry area. And now this one should help us finish out our tourism peninsula. So we are set on tiles. We don't need any more at all. Now, if we go check out what we've got, it says we've got helicopters, helicopter pathways. Perfect. We have the fancy hubs or harbors from the hubs and transportation update that came out with a bunch of free harbors for us. We got the cargo hub, which is what we're going to be installing to also help finish out our entire industry chain. This will be one of the ways where they can deliver to the cargo rail station and it will then deliver directly to this shipment hub to then be exported to wherever. So I'm actually really excited about this. And it looks like we got an ocean thermal energy conversion plant, which I'm actually, I kind of want to use that. I think it would be kind of neat. I'm going to put it in a place that you guys are probably not going to be happy with, but you know what? It's a video game and I'm going to take a little bit of liberties here and place it somewhere unconventional. So yeah, let's take a look at our next milestone. Now, here's where I don't really want to recommend adjusting your services and things like that to get to this point, because my plan actually ended around 24,000. So to, for us to hit 34,000, is actually incredible. It's beyond what I expected and what I wanted. And I don't know if I'm going to be adding in enough residential to push us to 48,000. I have a feeling we might. So, you know, what? yeah, you know what? Let's just go ahead. Let's push our city services up and maybe in the next episode, I'll hit the next residential milestone or something. But yeah, that's pretty neat. We're definitely beyond where I thought we were and things are looking great. 
All right, so here we are. I've got, we're pretty much ready to move on to the industry now. And I just kind of wanted to cover some things that uh, I've changed or whatnot. In case any of you are actually following along with the city of Applegate, give you a little bit of a hint or a cue as to what I'm doing. Whew, for some reason, I'm out of breath right now. All this city, all the city buildings just got me so dang tired. So this is the new neighborhood here. I decided to go with the large elementary school from the Heart of Korea pack. It has, as you can see, a student capacity of 1500, so it's huge. But for city services, I decided to actually go with a waste processing complex, despite its immense amount of pollution. And I also went with all of the helicopter things like high capacity police or medical helicopters, fire helicopters. Now for fire, this is going to be something interesting, and I'm going to actually kind of show it to you right over here, where if you want fire coverage with a fire helicopter depot, you either need to put down actual fire departments or looks like we have some over here already. Let's try and find a spot where there isn't any coverage. So like you can see this road here, how, how it's kind of gray a little bit. Well, there's not really any room to put one of these down over here. But as you can see, when I move the fire watchtower close to the road, it lights up green. If it's too far away from the road, it won't it won't provide any benefit. But as soon as you put it close to a road, all of a sudden it gives all the buildings within its radius the actual land value bonus of having a fire department. So I kind of added a few of these around town where the old fire departments were in a way to kind of like maybe in for the sake of our city instead obviously for the fire coverage but maybe in the case of our city for maybe this was like a watchtower that watches the boats in the harbor watches for swimmers out in the harbor or something like that act kind of acts like maybe like a lifeguard or just kind of a thing for whatever the boats i don't really know but i think it's kind of nice provides a little little bit of lore or whatever and my goodness this traffic is bad and I guess I actually never talked about the neighborhood over here besides the stuff I wasn't even supposed to talk about yet. So I decided to put the collector connected up in between this highway interchange over here. Somewhere near the center, central enough. I just needed it to be able to pass through all of these pylons or whatever, these pillars that our highway and rail line have. And then I decided to follow it along just far enough away from the highway itself. So that way we can get some zoning in here. So that way I could put some offices to help with the sound pollution that'll eventually happen for all these residential homes over here. I think it'd be kind of nice. And then I put these roads that go under. Now for, I think these two outside ones, the one on the left and the one on the right, I'm actually going to keep those as maybe a pedestrian path in the future once we have those. Just that way there's a little bit more walkability Maybe a pedestrian path with like a bus route or a bus lane or something or a tram route or something. I don't know. Whatever, when I get to public transportation, that's when we'll take care of that. But for the one in the middle here, I am thinking about turning into another... Actually kind of looking at this. I don't know if... I think I want the this left-hand most one to eventually turn into another collector. But it looks like it's pretty close to a pillar. I didn't think... I don't think I planned this. Oh, I did. All right, cool. We're fine. So we'll have like another collector run through there and meet up with that other collector. But that's pretty much it. That is pretty much the city update. Anyways, we are actually ready to jump into the next tile here or jump back into the industry. So we'll open this up. We're going to buy the one that was preventing us from completely finishing this. And since we do have one more tile to purchase, I'm just going to go ahead and buy out the end of our peninsula over here. And that should be good for the rest of this Applegate beginner's mini build. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, we're going to put the, we're probably actually, before I even consider putting down the cargo rail station, I'm probably going to want to finish out this highway interchange. So I've been going out by 12 and then dropping it down. Oh my goodness. Whoops. I didn't realize I had this on the maximum strength there. Going out by 12 units, dropping it down by two clicks per time bringing it to the ground and then turning it into the curved road tool thing and just connecting it up just like that. We could do that and then that will provide the access from the other side, the other industry area, I guess. Down by two, same thing, 12, down by two. 
and then just kind of curve it in somewhere over here. If you want to make sure that these are even, what you do is you go to the node that the other one's on, you bring it across, and then you come back in with your tool here and connect it up exactly at that node. And then there you go. It's perfectly symmetrical. A little bit of a tip there for you. A little bit of a noodle yeti tip or trick, I guess. I don't know. That was kind of weird. I won't say something like that again. But then I want to add these kind of like merge lanes in here where it goes from three. You add the on ramp and then you go to four lanes and then eventually it cuts back down to three over there. I already did that on this side and with all this other interchange over here. It's just to help kind of smooth out traffic where if they're going to want to exit, they have to leave their lane and then get off. They can't ride in the outside lane despite people merging and whatnot. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. So we are going to want the cargo rail station here. Now we're going to want to build out the bypass first. I'm just going to throw this down over here just like this right now. But eventually we are going to want to have it go underground. And that's actually where we're going to have our rail lines kind of meet up the bypass and the non bypass. Now I know from the other one that we built that this happens, the cargo rail station happens to be about 10 units away from the other one. And so we could do it somewhere right around here. I'm going to go ahead and demolish that piece right there because I'd like to have this hugged up against the interchange here as much as we can get it. I personally, I don't know if we're going to need the space or not. So I think having it as close as we can is going to be beneficial for us. Hook it up just like that. We go out by about that much. And then this is where we're, I think we're going to want to go underground. So I'm going to turn off guidelines here, go out by 12 units. I'm just going to push it down by one. Now, I, I don't know. Um, I don't want to ha demolish the highway, bury down or dig down some dirt, then lay the path and then build the highway back over. So this is the, this is the, um, lazy method that I'm doing right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it can take a little bit of work to try and figure out how to get this all set up with like a nice smooth downgrade into like a dig down or whatever. I don't know what to call it, but I think you get the point. I'm just going to go with something easy like this and I can use my imagination that we actually have a bridge going over this train line or something. I don't want to spoil too much, but we do want to go a little bit past the highway over here and then come back up by that same 12. And then while we're down here, we're going to want to create enough straight distance so that way we can then curve it in back into the line there so that merge and separation happens underground. Now, the reason why I wanted to push it farther out from the highway is actually for our... Oh my goodness, keep flashbanging you guys. Is actually for our, what's it called? Our frontage road. Now this one, we're going to bring it down using the slope terrain tool and then we're going to follow it along the highway until right around over here, right around the bend, and then we'll pull it out just a little bit, just a hair, and then we'll curve it up and into this interchange up here. Now, like I said, this might cause a lot of traffic for us. If it does, like we can already see this intersection over here is giving us problems. We might want to signalize this to help things run just a little bit smoother. Actually, it doesn't look like it's the signal. It looks like it's actually just the sheer amount of turn lanes here. So I'm going to downgrade this one to a two lane road instead. So that way we get the actual dedicated right and left hand turn lanes. I think that'll be fine. And as all this traffic clears up, people will actually start to use the appropriate lanes and it should clear up a little bit better. But yeah, I'm going to get the cargo line built out and the frontage road built out. And then I think we'll move on into the industry area and what I'm going to do there. <laughs> All right, there we go. I've got the kind of the um, basis of the little railway interchange here, as well as the new highway interchange. I went with a very, very strange looking triangle about, I pretty much kept what the existing road network was, demolished the one in the middle and then just made the side, side ones all two way. I probably could just get away with making them all one way, but, and then making it a real roundabout, but I feel for the capacity on this side, 
it's going to be perfectly fine. We shouldn't see any troubles there. Now I know some of you people love your drains and you're probably, probably screaming at me about this turn, but you know what? It's a video game, man, and I'm, I'm having fun. And in order to try and help satisfy you a little bit, I made its merge lane real long just so I can get back up to speed. And I tried to leave a little bit of room in here so that way there wouldn't be any sort of binds and train traffic or anything like that. So I think it's fine. I think it'll be fine. I don't think we should see any issues with it. But yeah, that's pretty much that. Now we're going to figure out about the rest of this area over here and how we're going to lay this out. So I know that I'm going to keep thing or keep the zoning as close or actually. Hmm. Because I think we're going to want to worry about this particular train station first before we even consider. Oh, well, look at that. Another academic year, but we don't have enough students to reach the next reputation level. So hopefully next episode, when we actually start zoning in a little bit more residential, that will then push us over just a little bit into the next next reputation level. But it's all right if we don't reach it. So I'm just going to go for somewhat of a simple like roundabout thing going on in here. And I'm going to want to see if I can. My goodness, there's so many guidelines. Actually, I don't know what I want to see, but. I just want to make sure we have adequate room in here for all of our everything we need. So we got our little roundabout here. I think we're going to probably connect this up as soon as possible. And you know what? I don't know where we'd want. It. I think we're just going to want its access to come straight off of here. Maybe put it like somewhere right in the center or something like that. All right, here we actually are. Sorry about that. I just ended up going with something simple. I really didn't want to think too much. And I don't know how long it's going to take for our industry to actually start using this. Oops, I didn't mean to flashbang you. I think once this person actually gets to work, I believe that's when this cargo train terminal will actually start to function properly. And that's when we'll start to see things taking their routes to it. It's pretty much only going to act as a way for our mining and forestry industry to get their specialized goods over here a lot quicker. But it'll be what it'll be. And we should see all this generic industry use it to export. But enough about that. We need to figure out how to get all these roads laid out over here. And actually, I'll comment on this real quick. I did. I kept the same asymmetrical road five lane one. Just to keep the dedicated turn lane getting into this area from both sides. And so we can have the dedicated turn lanes getting out of here as well. And that's pretty much it. I'm not too worried about this binding up too much. I'm thinking we actually want the warehousing not on the op. Or, ooh, what if we did do the warehousing on the opposite side? What happens if we pull a four unit road out from here? How is our turn lanes? So we lose the dedicated left on this side. We upgrade it like that. We we keep the dedicated left. We don't have any dedicated right or right from this way, but our industry, oh, whoops, our industry is on this side. Hmm. I think this will be okay if we have it off of a road like this. Now, I'm not quite sure what capacity warehouse we're going to want. We could go crazy and actually use a warehouse with railway connections somewhere over here, but I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think this one's just a bit too big, so I think we're going to do two medium warehouses right in this little pocket over here. Now, I think same thing as our cargo rail. We're going to want some kind of a roundabout in here. Just pull it off just a little bit. Let's just throw down a random random road in here and see if we can fit two medium warehouses off of it. Oh, well, I guess it needs zoning. My bad. I won't do that again. We'd fit one, but we can't fit two. Does not look like it. No. Not at all. Not right there, at least. Gosh darn diddly, how diddly do, neighbor. We can fit two like this. However, this does look pretty precarious. I'm not quite sure if we'll be able to create the roundabout we need, but we can darn well try. So you know what? We're going to connect it up there, run this over, run that over there. And you 
you know what? It works. It has worked. We can go ahead and throw in a little bit of a pedestrian path in. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Now we do have to set these. We're going to need... I'm going to keep... I'm going to keep both on empty and set them to commercial zone goods. I don't know if that's exactly what we want, but I feel like as long as our industry, all of our industry is going to be sending, obviously, as you can see, as soon as we put them down and set them to commercial zone goods, our industry's just fallen in love. And apparently I don't get to play the game today. I am going to dinner, apparently. So never mind. I will see you all tomorrow. All right. So the next morning, dinner served its purpose. Now, while I was thinking uh, over the evening or whatever, well, I guess over the night and the morning, I realized that I don't want these on empty. I actually want both of these on fill. However, I don't want to import or anything like that. And I happen to know that from prior experience that these two warehouses will eventually back up and risk get to full anyways, even while set on empty. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave them be until then. But I did notice while I was editing earlier that I forgot to connect up this line and that's why we're not seeing any sort of use out of our, what's it called? I can't remember what the, the cargo train station. There we go. Something like that. And now it should finally start seeing routes and things like that. If we go in here. I'll let it run for a second. Hello? There we go. Now you can see... I don't know why trucks aren't showing up, but you could actually see them on the road there driving in. See? So we are good to go. We have all the routes, or it's now operational and doing well. Now, I think for the next part of this, before we move into finishing this out, I actually want to finish our cargo exporting method, which is going to be down over here at the beach. And as you can see, I did put down the wave energy wave thing or whatever, ocean thermal power plant. I actually want to put the cargo harbor right here in this corner. And that's what I meant by some kind of strange placement there with the ocean thermal energy conversion plant. It's right next to the harbor. Like, I don't know, to me, like, I think like, oh, maybe the boats might run into it or something, but you know what? It is, it is what it is. I want to stick it down on this end of this harbor because this is going to be like the industry side of things, I guess. And I want to keep it away from all the tourism and whatnot. So that's pretty much that. So the hard part about this for the cargo shipment rail thing or whatever is actually going to be the train line. Now, I'm just going to set it down right there. I probably should have leveled the land first, but it's all right. Because with the rail line, we're going to have to bring it down and it's going to have to follow this road and then eventually start raising up. And then we're going to have to curve it down and into this. Because of the key wall and the water, it's going to be really difficult to get that into position. So we're probably going to have to whip out our land tools and create a temporary pad for us to work with. But it is what it is. And then, you know what? I think I'm just going to do all of that. I'm just going to snap my fingers and have it all done. Oh, look at that. As soon as I snapped, we had an academic here. Nice. Anyways, this, and I'm also going to take care of all of this over here. Oh my goodness. What in tarnation? What? Oh, do we have... Let's see if this is a junction. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. And then we're going to... Hopefully this will clear out. I really hope I didn't pick a bad... I hope I didn't pick a bad road layout here. But we will see. Hopefully... What in the world? What is going on here? Are these returning to facility? My lord. Well, <laughs> it looks like um, hopefully this will resolve itself as the episode goes on. I'm desperately hoping it does, but we will see. So anyways, I'm going to snap my fingers. I'm going to get the cargo harbor attached and I'm going to get this area filled out. And I guess I'll time lapse it a little bit and explain what I'm going to put over here and why. So anyways, I'll be right back. All right. For the cargo rail line, I decided to go with a little bit of a roundabout there around it. And that was perfectly fine. Now, something I didn't do on camera here is I actually demolished it and upgraded the entire key wall to a walkable key wall from one of the content creator packs. 
I believe it's from Bridges and Piers, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, Sims can now walk along that key wall in the future. But beyond that, I upgraded the uh, main arterial there and put a roundabout. Now the uh, rail line and the frontage road gave me a little bit of a little bit of trouble, but that honestly that's my own fault. I should have done the rail line first since it's the larger, more space sensitive one of the pieces of infrastructure. And it probably would have come out a lot straighter, a lot neater, a lot nicer if I did. But you know what? I think it adds a little bit of character having that little bit of a little bit of a curve thing going on there at the end. I did end up having to whip out the land tools to level out a pad just to the left of the cargo harbor. So that way I could bring the rail line in down nice and smooth. Now for the rest of the area. I was looking at my imports and exports. And... Well, I mean, for one, I accidentally somehow forgot one of the oil buildings, but I caught it. I found the oil building and demolished it, so we're no longer importing. And that's when I actually went back and I actually completed the list of names that I'll have in the description. Or I actually just put down a couple buildings and just watched them level up and wrote down their names and what they imported. Don't worry, I already, since I already had most of the list, I only needed to know or figure out a couple more. And so it was, it was real quick. I didn't have to spend a whole lot of time on that. But anyways, for the rest of that industry area, I was looking at the imports and exports and I was thinking I really don't want to add more industry because I I think after I was watching our mining industry for a little bit, I think a lot of our exports are actually the raw product because I went with that really giant excavator thing that looks like it's digging into the mountain for the just for the looks. So I think we're good. I ended up putting down some fish factories, filling it in with a bunch of university buildings. But anyways, in the rest of the space there, I actually want to leave for city services. So as our city grows and expands, we can put like our water processing or maybe if in the future we want to put down a prison or whatever. We have all this space over there to put down these things that don't generate a lot of traffic. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I actually have a few more things I'd like to say, but I actually want to jump into game to say them. All right, in case you just wanted to skip to a TLDR or whatever, I'll give you a quick recap here, and then we're going to dive back in and I'm going to finish up with some of the points on Applegate and some of the things I might have changed and whatnot. To start, the first point is make sure you are producing or only allowing the general industry in that is that takes the specialized goods that you're producing. So if you only have a farming industry, you only want to allow the general industry that takes farming goods. The generic industry, you can tell what it takes by its name. The list, I'll leave the list in the description. It'll be a complete list for level one, two, and three, depending on when you're going back and realizing you need to change things, or if you even want to change things. It's a very tedious process, so it's completely understandable if you don't want to do that. Now, of course, after you get your industry all set up where you're actually supplying it with the goods it needs so it doesn't have to needlessly import, you're going to want to think about the next step, which is either them selling their goods to commercial zones or exporting them. Now, for the commercial zone part, that's basically a thinking ahead where for the road networks and arterials going or thinking, OK, I'm going to have a commercial zone way on the other side of the city here. I need to make sure I have a arterial or a highway or a rail line that has a cargo station near it that can then send the goods quickly and effectively across the city. And I think that's pretty much it for that. There's going to be a couple things where if I jump into the game here, let's see if I go like that. Warehousing. This one is actually, it is kind of important. Sorry, wrong camera. It is kind of important in a way, it really depends. Say for instance, you don't have a whole lot of generic industry, but you have a lot of commercial, you're gonna want, but you know you're producing enough goods for it. That's when you want to put down the warehouse because what it'll do, if, if, you, if you set it to fill, what it'll do is when those commercial zones need the goods and they're not able to get it directly from a generic industry building, they will then pull it from the fill warehouse. And so basically just prevents you from needlessly importing as well in that regard. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to kind of cover some of the changes I've made in the city if you actually follow along the series or whatnot. 
So over here, this is the design layout I went with. I was basically for the roundabout for the cargo station. Basically, I turned on the policy um, industrial space planning, which doubles your commercial good production. I just wanted to see how effective every different type of layout I could think of would be for not just this, but also the warehouses down here, these intersections, especially this one over here that has the, what is it called? The, um, it breaks road hierarchy and gives them access to the interchange up there. And this works with the industrial space planning. It never bound. It was always, it would always flow. And so with it off, it just looks great. It flows great. I'm really happy with it. I'm experiencing no problems. We do see some backage right over here, but it is what it is. It never actually stops. I just put a junction here so that way we would we do prevent binding in that area. But yeah, that's pretty much that. I'm really excited for the future. Um, oh, also, if you guys happen to know any information about these waste processing complexes and waste transfer facilities, the waste processing complex, you can see it only has 12, 11, 12 trucks in use. They'll show up at this waste transfer facility. They'll say they go from 0% to 100% full and leave, but this waste transfer facility never has its capacity reduced. And I have no idea what's going on with that one. My other waste transfer facilities work just fine. I have one over here as well as way over here. But for some reason, this particular one over by the highway can't have its garbage picked up and I have no idea why. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the future. What we're going to be doing next is filling out the rest of this area with a lot of offices as well as a little bit of residential, but mostly it's going to be all tourism. And actually, you know what? I don't think I showed our traffic percentage and what it looks like over here in the industry area. Right now we're at 85, 86, but really that number doesn't matter as long as our traffic is flowing. Like we can go look at this interchange over here. It doesn't ever stop. It doesn't ever bind up. So it's not anything we have to worry about. We come over here. Nothing ever stops or binds up other than the traffic at a stoplight, but it just keeps going. It never stops. And it's like that throughout the city. Not, everything's okay. Nothing binds up. Everything moves freely and we don't experience any issues. So I think we're doing great in that regard. If we look at our imports, nobody is importing again. So we're still in that self-sufficiency range. I'm really excited for this. I'm hoping to finish this city. My original goal was to be under 100 imports, but I'm actually kind of pushing to say, you know what? I want to keep it at this under 10 imports where it only shows five. As far as our exports go, we fluctuate between about this number here, 3.9 thousand units and about four and a half thousand units. We're still exporting a lot of fish, as you can see every single one of our docks over there, except for it looks like two are exporting, but that's okay. We're going to put down some more markets and that'll get taken care of in the future. But yeah, I've rambled on way too long. That's pretty much what we're going to do. That's our city. And I'm thinking it looks, it's looking great. And I'm really hopeful for the future with it. Thanks for joining me. Happy that I became we. Will you take the dive with me to part five? Bye for now.